Good evening, and thank you once again for tuning in to Gospel Kingdom TV. My name is Pastor Daniel Newcomb, and uh, you're watching the, the show from Promise LA or Promise Los Angeles. Tonight, I got a message for you entitled, God Says Yes. And, and what do I mean by that? Well, many of you out there have been praying and praying for a long time. You've been praying for your finances, for provision. You've been praying for health, for recovery, for a healing. You've been praying for maybe your children or your grandchildren to come to know the Lord. Uh, many of you have been praying for, for relationships, maybe a reconciliation or, or whatever it may be. I want to let you know that God says yes. And many of you might, might be asking, oh, well, how do you know that? How do you know what my prayers are? How do you know that God says yes? You know, I, I not too long ago, I uh, was going through a time where I, where I, I just dove into the word of God and it was on my heart just to, just to some, study some of the promises of God. So much impacted was I, I was so impacted by the study, I decided to name my church after it, hence the name Promise Los Angeles. But there's two biblical pr pr promises I want to share with you tonight real quick. Uh, the first one is found in 1 John 5, 14. And it says this, this is the confidence that we have before him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Do you get that? That if you ask anything according to his will, he hears us. See, that's why it's so important to get into your word. That's why it's so important to get into, into the, the, the church, into the body of believers where, where, the, where the word of God is being preached. Because I can tell you this, that, that his word is his will and his will is his word. God isn't going to do anything outside of his word. And God isn't going to give a word that's not inside his will. And it's so important for you to get into the word so you understand when you pray, you pray according to his will. It's important for you to get into his word because so you can understand how much he loves you. Because if you understand how much he loves you, you'll understand how much he has some great stuff for you. And if you know, understand how much he loves you, you'll understand he knows what's good for you. And he will never give you anything that's not good for you. I always say that God always gives us something for our good and for his glory. Amen. The second thing, the, the second promise, biblical promise that I, uh, that I have was, is found in 2 Corinthians 1 verse 20. It says, for many, for as many as are the promises of God, in him they are yes, therefore also through him in our, is our amen to the glory of God through us. Did you get that? For many are the promises of God and in him, in Christ. Therefore also through him is our amen and through the glory of God through us. That means if you put your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ, you ask them to be your Lord and Savior for their forgiveness of sins and for the salvation of your soul, God unleashes precious promises in your life that he might use you for his glory in you and through you. He says his, his, his promises is our amen. That word amen is let it be so. That let it be so. Not, not maybe it's going to happen, but let it be so that God can use us and his glory will be shown in us and through us. I don't know about you, but I just think that's awesome. That God would use someone like me. Somebody uh, that came out of the backwoods of the, of the central San Joaquin Valley that he wants to use me for his glory and for my good. Many of you might be listening and you say, well, okay, Pastor Daniel, if his, if his glories are, if his promises are yes and amen, why hasn't it happened yet? You don't know how long I prayed. You don't know how long I've sought him. You don't know how, how, how long I've, I, I've, I've asked him to do something in my life. I want to give you three things. Why, why maybe... Your yes hasn't happened yet. Three things I want you to consider. The third, first thing I want you to consider is that your yes requires waiting. And you're like, waiting? Like, like in a doctor's office? Nobody wants to wait. I know we live in this microwave society and, and we think that things are going to happen instantly. But I'm reminded in Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31, it says that, But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk 
and not be faint. That word wait means patience, hope, and continued worship and praise during your time, as you wait in hope. Does that make sense? Let me say that again. That word wait means to be having patience and hope with continued worship and praise as you are waiting in hope. And, and, and a lot of times, you know, during the waiting times, you, you start to lose faith, right? You start to say, well, maybe I didn't hear God correctly, or, or maybe it's a, it's, it wasn't in God's will after all. It must not be God's will. I want to encourage you to wait on the Lord because something happens during the waiting. Amen. During that time of waiting, God does something in you and through you to prepare for the promise that he has for you. Let, let me give you an example of that. In many of you know that one of the promises that I received from God was that he was going to use me in his service and use me in ministry. And, and several years ago, I came to Los Angeles believing that he had a promise for me to, to plant here. And, and, and one of the, the few of the things that I prayed for is that I, I, I prayed for money, I prayed for a building, and I prayed a woman for a woman to accompany me in this, in this life of ministry. And I, and I had waited a very long time. One of the things I've noticed during this time of waiting that if, if, if God would have said yes back then, I wouldn't have been ready. I wouldn't have been prepared. If God opened up a building for me to open a church, I would have no idea what I was doing. If God, if God uh, answered my, my prayer for, for finances, I probably would have blown it on something else. Maybe had two motorcycles instead of just one. And if God would have given me a woman at the time, I probably wouldn't know how to, how to handle running a church and, and, and being in a relationship at the same time. You see, God knows what, is do, what he's doing. He's working something in us and through us to prepare us for the promise that he has for us. Check this out in, in Philippians 2, verse 12 and 13. It says, therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it's God who works in you, both to will and to do his good pleasure. While you're waiting, while you're waiting for the, 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 the coming promise, God is doing something in you. Expect great things. Expect God to, to, to keep his promise. But most of all, expect something for God to do something in you. I'm so glad for this, the waiting time. And, and there's still some waiting times ahead of me. And, I'm, and I look forward for God to do something in me to prepare me for that promise. Let's go back to Isaiah 40, 31, because he says that those who wait on the Lord Amen. shall renew their strength. One of, the, one of the translation is that you will gain new strength. That means you'll be able to do things that you haven't been able to do before. Trust God during those waiting times. The second thing I want to share with you is that your, while your yes may require waiting, your, your yes may also require not yet. I know you've heard that before, but let me, let me uh, illustrate it this way. You know, your, your situations may line up and your faith may be strong, but it still may be a not yet. In, in, in Mark chapter 5, verse 21, we find a man named, named Jairus. He's a leader in the synagogue. And his daughter is sick. Jesus had just landed on the shore. And, and he starts running up to Jesus and he says, Jesus, help me out. My, 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 my daughter is sick and only you can heal her. And Jesus agrees. He says, come on, let's go. And so as they're, as they're, they're, they're walking to Jairus' house, uh, a, a huge crowd of people started to come up on Jesus. And they, they started to check him out and, and, and they, they started to press into him. And, and, and during that time, there was a, a woman who had a, who had a, a bleeding disorder. Who, who the, the Bible says that for years she's been going to doctors. For years she's been trying various things. But she finally, she came to herself and said, if I could just touch the hem of, of Jesus' garment, then I'll be healed. And during this time that she does and she gets healed and, and Jesus feels, hey, 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 somebody touched me. Somebody touched the hem of my garment. I felt power coming from, from out of me. 
And, and, and he's looking around and he finally finds the, the, the lady and he, and he tells her, he says, don't, don't, don't worry. In, in, in our lingo today, don't trip. Your, your faith has made you whole. And that's great. If the story ended there, we'd be able to celebrate. We'd be able to rejoice because this woman who, who's been bleeding for years has now been healed. We all rejoice in the healing. Amen? But let's go back to Jairus. Because as this woman has gotten her healing, as this woman has been ministered to by Jesus, he receives news. Somebody comes up to Jesus and, and he says, hey, your daughter is dead. Don't bother Jesus anymore. Leave him alone. There's nothing more you can do. But Jesus, only Jesus, amen? Jesus overhearing in Mark chapter 5, verse 36, he says this. It says, but Jesus over, overhearing what was being spoken said to the synagogue official, do not be afraid any longer, only believe. It says, do not be afraid any longer, only believe. I don't know about you, but if I was Jairus, I'm like, believe what? She's already dead. I believed when I came to you. I believe when you said, yes, you're going to hang out at my house. But this word, just to give you a little bit of a, 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 of a word definition here, that word believe is not just to believe like a mental ascent or, or whatnot. This believe, Jesus is telling him, believe in the way you believed before you heard the bad report. You get that? Believe in the way you did before you heard bad news. Do, do you remember the time when, when, you, when, you, when you heard a word from God? Maybe you heard a, a word from God about, about a, a calling or a job. Maybe you heard a word from God about, about that God was indeed going to heal you or that he was going to prosper you or, or, or that he was going to bring you or into a relationship or restore an old relationship that you have been praying for. You heard a word from God, and, and when you first heard that word, you rejoiced. But yet, bad news comes. Maybe you hear that that job was already taken. Maybe you hear that that your, your, the things that you were hoping for were already gone. But Jesus says, believe in the same manner in which you believe when you, before you heard the bad news. Tonight, I believe there's some of you tonight that, that you might be like Jairus. You, you, you've asked the Lord and you've asked him and you've asked him and, and, you, and you see people around you getting blessed. You see people around you getting delivered. You see people around you getting a breakthrough. You see people around you getting healed and you're saying, Lord, what about me? You might even said, I've been faithful in the church. Lord, I, I, I've paid my tithes. I've, I, I've done this and I've done that. I want to encourage you tonight. Believe in the way that you believe before you heard a bad report. Because if you know the story in Mark chapter 5, Jesus indeed goes to Jairus' house. And even during the time when, when people were, were mourning and they were weeping, Jesus goes over to the girl and he brings her back to life. It's never too late with God. It's never too late for Jesus to do, mighty, do something mighty in your life. The promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. Sometimes your yes may not be not yet. But, but believe in the way you believe before you heard a bad report. The third thing I want to I want to say is, is that your yes, when God says yes, it'll happen God's way, not ours. It'll happen God's way, not ours. Let me give you another example of that. There in, in 2 Kings chapter 5, there's a Syrian commander by the name of Naaman. And Naaman had leprosy. And he, and he, and he found the compassion of his of his leaders, and, and they said, hey, we, we heard of a, of a prophet over in Israel. Why don't you go over to him and see if he can heal you? And so Naaman goes, and, and uh, he goes and finds Elisha, the prophet. And, and, and as he goes and, 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 uh, and finds Elisha, Elisha understands what's going on, and, and, he, and he hears about Naaman. The Bible says that he didn't even go out to see Naaman. He just yelled out from the front of his door. He says, go, go and wash yourself in the Jordan River seven times. I think it was seven times, three times, whatever it was. 
But uh, it says, go into the Jordan River. Naaman gets mad. It says, what? It says, don't this guy know who I am? Why wouldn't he come out and just wave his hand and do something glorious and, and God would perform a miracle? But no, he told him, go into the Jordan and dunk yourself. And he is fuming. He is mad. And he's on his way home and his servant said, hey, you know, uh, if, if, if Elisha would have told you to do something else, wouldn't you have done that? Why don't you go give this a try? Why don't you go dunk yourself? You see, the Jordan River was dirty. It was muggy. You couldn't see two feet in front of you. That's why he didn't want to go. And sometimes God is going to ask you to do something that might be dirty, that might be against your thinking, that might be against uh, the way you think your promise is supposed to come. So you know what disappointment is? Disappointment comes when you think things are supposed to be the way you think they're supposed to be. That's why people get disappointed with God. But God's promises are yes and amen. God has some great and precious promises for you. But they will happen his way, not your way. In Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8 and 9, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. You know, if you know the story from Naaman, Naaman finally relents and he says, okay, I'll go into that dirty old Jordan. I'll go over there and I'll dunk myself. And so he does. And as soon as he comes out, his leprosy is gone. And he starts rejoicing. And he starts praising. And the word that he received, that if you just go and you just dunk yourself into the Jordan River, you'll be healed. Tonight, there's a promises waiting, you and I. There are promises waiting that, that God wants to do something mighty, wants to show himself mighty on, 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 on your behalf. And I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you that, that during the waiting times, let God do something mightily in you. Maybe there's something in, your, in, in, in the way you view things. Maybe there's something in, 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 something in your character that he wants to, that he's trying to purge out of you. Maybe there's something that he wants to do in you to prepare somebody, prepare you for that, for that promise. Maybe your yes is not yet. Will you believe and still, and still rejoice and still, and still know that God has something for you? To believe in the way you believe when you first got the word? And maybe yes means to to, to do things God's way, not your way. Let's face it. I've been doing my way for years. And it's gotten me to a whole bunch of trouble. Can any of you relate to that? Tonight, I want to encourage you to grasp after God's promises. He's got precious promises for us. Promises of joy. Promises of life. Promises of purpose. Where are you at in all these things? Are you in that place where, where you're in that waiting period? Trust in God. Trust in the Lord. He's good. Like I said earlier, he loves you and he knows what's best for you. Will, will you believe God radically? Will you trust him in, in all things? Tonight, I want to encourage you. God has a promise for you. I always thought in, in my for my own life that this calling that I have to preach is not just a calling, but it's a promise. That, that, that It's a promise that God has, is going to do something so mightily in my life that he can use me for his glory. And as we were talking about earlier, it, it's been such an adventure. One of the things that I want to do one of these days is, is, is write a book about the adventure I've, I've experienced through this time. And only God can bring that. Only God can bring that. But it, I want to tell you tonight that it starts with Jesus. If you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ tonight, God has promises for you. You are his child. You are co-heir to an inheritance that, that awaits us. 
and you have been given the benefits, the rights, and the privileges thereof. But it starts with Jesus. God has something planned for you. And I just want to encourage you that, that you would press in to the Lord. Tonight, maybe you are listening to this and it all sounds great. And, and uh, you're, you're praying and you're hoping. And, uh, but you haven't done the first step yet. And that's surrender your life to Jesus. If, if you're out in the world and, 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 and you're, you know you're being disobedient and you know you're outside of the will of God, and yet you're, you're, you're asking him to do things in your life. That just doesn't work. Your promises are found in Christ. Your promises are found when you put your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ. For the forgiveness of sins and the salvation of your soul. That one day God could just unleash heaven upon you. And that all the great things that he has in store you are... are, are are, are, are yours in Christ. So tonight I want to encourage you. If you never put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ tonight. I'm going to ask you to do that. Tonight if uh, you're listening to uh, on, on either YouTube or on social media. Uh, I, I just once again I'm going to ask you to, to comment. And say yeah that's me. Will you pray for me? Comment. Uh, Email us. You can you could you could email me at uh, promislosangeles at gmail .com. You can find us on um, on Facebook at Promise LA, on Instagram, um, in, uh, Instagram on Promise Los Angeles, and uh, send us a note. We want to know that we you know that was you that uh, that made a decision for Christ tonight. It all starts with Him, and who knows what what the Lord can do with a life that's totally yielded to him. Let me pray for you tonight. For those of you who have never given your heart to Jesus Christ, I want to pray for you. All you got to do is say, and there's nothing magic in the words. What matters is the heart. Will you, will you pray with me? Say, Dear Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I confess that I am a sinner in need of a Savior. Thank you for going to the cross for me. I receive you now. I pray that you would give me the Holy Spirit to help me live this life in which you called me to live. In Jesus' name, amen. If that was you, uh, if you have any questions, reach out to me in, in any of those ways. You could also reach me at 323-471-4456. On, um, on the 14th of March, we will be back out at MacArthur Park, and um, we will actually be starting services out there, so I'm excited about that. And uh, come and join us. Uh, if, you, uh, if you don't know where MacArthur Park is in downtown LA, again, reach out to us. Uh, I'd love to see you. I'd love to meet you. Um, stay tuned, and uh, God bless you all. Be sure to tune in for Gospel Kingdom TV for more powerful messages from the Word of God. Jesus loves you. I had a pastor that said to me uh, many years ago, Pastor Ray Reader, Jesus loves you, and so do I, and there ain't nothing you can do about it. Jesus loves you. God bless you guys.